What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Elliot Delp and today we are going to be talking about building AR-10s. So uh, let's get right into this video. So like I said before the intro rolled, we are going to be talking about building AR-10s and some of the benefits and complications out of the build process. Uh, as some of you may know, I am working on a build on an AR-10 and it has been a lot different than AR-15s and stuff I am commonly used to. There's, there's a lot of complications and uh, just other stuff that I'd like to talk about and I think are important and if you're looking to build an AR-10 you should know about. Okay, So before we start the video I would like to ask that you guys hit the like and subscribe button. It would mean a ton to me. Alright, 2A channels constantly under fire so just that little bit of support means a lot. And if you guys would like to go tear up the comment section, go do that. I love hearing from every single one of you guys. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are the best in the world. and it's awesome and the positivity and just everything that goes on in the comment section is great so I love to hear from you guys okay so let's go let's let's start let's start off by talking about what an AR-10 is and I'll be brief on that because I'm assuming most of you guys already know what an AR-10 is and uh, some of the purposes behind it and um, just a little bit of background before we actually talking about the build all right so an AR-10 is a larger framed AR-15. Um, it's built up bigger to um, take on larger cartridges. So like your AR-10s will consist of 308s. They will consist of 6.5 Creedmoors and 243s. Those are the top three that I would say are more common. I wouldn't even say a 243 is that common. Mainly 308 and 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay, those are your two main ones. And then you have like some other random ones. Um, I know the 300 Win Mag, that there's one out there. Uh, the only reason I know about that one is because I saw it on Demolition Ranch's channel one time. Uh, and that's the only one I've ever seen. But they do make a wide variety of cartridges for the AR-10, but they are the larger frame. So what you would use this for is longer range hunting. Uh, I did a video on my channel talking about why I don't think the AR-10 is the best platform to use for hunting. But it is... A decent option okay I, I would prefer other things for like medium to uh, close range like an AR-15 for that matter chambered in 65 Grindle but the AR-10 is a very viable option okay especially if you're hunting something like hogs um, white-tailed deer elk so larger animals and you need larger longer range uh, the AR-10 is a very viable option okay so that's one of the desire or what you would want an AR-10 for. Also, they're just fun to shoot. You don't really need that big of a reason. Um, they're also uh, good long, good good things to shoot long range. Like I said, 308, 65 Creedmoor. It's hard to beat. Okay, so that's kind of what you would what an AR-10 is and what you use an AR-10 for. And I know it was very broad, but it is that that was what I wanted to give on that. Um, so now back to me on what I'm doing, I'm building an Aero Precision M5. Okay, so right now the AR-10, AR-15 world is being flipped upside down and it is impossible to find parts, find ammo, uh, find people to DM you back. So, like, it's, it's hard right now to build for anybody. Uh, especially if you're trying to build on a budget, which I try to do for the most part. I know when you say error precision, that is a little bit more expensive, but not really in terms of AR-10s that I've figured out. They can get pretty expensive. So, so what are some common problems when you go through the build process? Okay, so the the largest the large the largest problem that I've encountered is definitely um, no there's no standardization when you when you build yourself an AR-15 all the parts work pretty much the same um, all lowers and uppers will fit together for the most part I mean you'll have exceptions of special stuff but for the most part all uppers and lowers will work together 
Um, lower parts kits will usually fit universally across all lowers, and I'm being very general here, but for the most part, all the AR-15 stuff is really, really standardized. And um, it's just not that way on the AR-10. AR-10, there's a couple different patterns. Uh, there's the LR-308, which is, I believe, the DPMS pattern. I, I may be wrong on that, so let me know down below if I am. And then there's the Armor Light pattern, the AR-10 pattern. Okay, so those are pretty much the two patterns. And then you have a bunch of like wild cat patterns, like the Palmetto State Armory pattern, which is just its own thing. It's kind of it's kind of its own deal. Um, the Arm Light stuff won't work on it, but also the DPMS stuff won't work on it. It's, well, I lied. The DPMS stuff fits on it, but it fits weird. So on my Palmetto AR-10, I have put my uh, M5 upper on and it sits kind of weird it, it'll, it'll sit the pins will shut but there's like a gap it, it doesn't fit perfectly um, so I wouldn't recommend doing it but it does kind of fit so I guess if worse comes to worse it might work maybe that's something I should do one day I'll chalk that down as a video idea but for the most part you got those two patterns and you got the wildcat the, the random, I say wildcat, I'm, I don't know what I'm thinking of. Um, and you got the random patterns like that. So you have to match those up. So you have to get, if you're going to get your DPMS pattern, you have to get your lower and your upper, and then you have to get your bolt to match the DPMS pattern, and then you have to have a high or a low DPMS pattern handguard to match up with your upper, uh, because the rail heights are different. So, like, for example, the M5 that I'm building has a high um, high rail on top of the upper receiver, so I have to match that on the handguard or rail. So, that's a dilemma, so you have to make sure that works. And just the whole thing in general has to work together, and none of it's standardized. I, I went safe on all of my um, lower parts kit straight straight M5 stuff. Um, my buffer tube and I ended up settling on a buffer. Uh, it was all M5 just just because I was a little unsure of it. I might go back and work on it but for the most part the whole rifle is here and ready to go and you should be seeing a video on the channel after Christmas um, because there's some stuff I need to get. I need to talk to the machine shop about um, getting me a muzzle brake that will go with the suppressor that I got and then I also need handguard and gas a gas block of some sort and with a handguard I'm I'm pretty much set on a 12 inch handguard because I both I have a 16 inch barrel from ballistic advantage and I also got the ballistic advantage bolt um, just to keep it consistent and they both work with the M5 stuff so I want a 12 inch handguard but the M5 handguards from Arrow are on back order on Optics Planet, and then you just can't find them anywhere else. And I'm not put placing a uh, placing a back order. I'm just not doing it. So I'm going to either wait for an Arrow or a Midwest Industries 12 inch handguard, whichever one comes first. Because the idea of this build is for more of a hunting build to take hawk hunting. I'm going to put the ATN on top of it, take it off my Diamondback, and I don't know what I'm going to be doing with my Diamondback. Maybe I'll swap a barrel for a six millimeter on it. I might do that. Um, I digress. So really the standardization problem is the biggest problem in building an AR-15 or AR-10. I'm sorry. And you really have to be careful with it because you don't want to buy the wrong parts, then waste money, and then you have armor light parts sitting around. So then you have to build an armor light AR-10 and then that's another thousand dollars, two thousand dollars down the drain because you got to dump it in. Because I mean you can't just have parts sitting around. That, the worst feeling ever is to go into my gun safe and just see parts just chilling. Horrible. Ugh. Um, so save yourself some money and buy the right parts so you don't have to build two guns. Um, and, and that's that's the biggest issue and I think you need to really be mindful. You need to watch a lot of YouTube videos. You need to um, reach out to people 
like I said, I'm always willing to talk to anybody. I've, I've had so many people reach out to me on like Facebook, um, Instagram, just asking me about filming, asking me about um, all different types of stuff with AR-15s. Y'all are awesome. And I appreciate the support so much you guys don't even know. Okay, so I think I'm going to conclude the video there. I know it wasn't too in-depth, but I think I got my point across. That the biggest problem in the AR-10 world is standardization and the, the lack there of standardization. And you need to be careful when you're building these rifles to make sure you get what you need and you need to make sure it works together. I can't stress that enough, okay? So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please go hit the like and subscribe button and go down to the comment section and comment your little hearts out because I love hearing from you guys, alright? And also, merch, top link in the description. Go check it out if you haven't. It's worth it, alright? So, I'll see you guys next time. As always, take someone outdoors, guys.